<laughs> it's science, bitch! <laughs> um, filming a fluorescent tube shooting through a Voigtlander 40mm with diffraction grating. So, <clears throat> actually the way diffraction grating works is still a theory. That's because science actually has no idea what light is. It still doesn't know. So, maybe you could explain to me why in any sort of spectra the red light is always the most spatially diverse from the point of origin and the blue is always closest to the point of origin. As I've said before, Mother Nature is really, really simple. The answer is simple. Do you have the answer? Science doesn't! <laughs> let's take a look at something else and let's isolate out. Let me first actually turn the light away. Let's look at some different lights, okay? Let me bring them into focus. It's a manual focus lens. Let's look at some red light. Okay. Now, the domes on these are the same. Whether they're blue or ultraviolet, you can't see it, but the domes are clear. Okay. It's just a different frequency of LED light. Okay. Now, let me step back and uh, focus in for you, and then we'll get to the good part. Okay. It's kind of hard focusing with diffraction grading over the lens. Now, we see some dimensionality, right? Well, yes, if I actually... very barely. But one thing you'll actually notice is that when I hold the LED like this, it's nice and bright, and it's a little bit brighter that way, but it's still bright, regardless. And you don't actually see a diffuse spectrum. Now, let's take something that's more energy intensive. Energy intensive, excuse me. I have a clear dome here. Let's turn on the green light. Let's get the red out of the way first, and let's turn on the green light and take a look at it. You actually see some of the spectra here, and let's bring it back into focus. Can we focus? Focus! Here we go. You see a lot more dimensionality. You actually see a very weak red end spectrum, and it's bright right at the uh, green end of the spectrum towards the blue end of the spectrum, but you'll actually see depth and dimensionality. Now, all of this is applicable to camera lenses, okay? Lenses, you'll never find a video about this regarding uh, photography anywhere on YouTube. Lenses are far more than uh, the refractive properties. They are. Um, ED dope glass, for example, has uh, elements in it that changes the diamagnetic, the dielectric uh, permittivity of the light, which actually passes through the lens. This is an undeniable fact. ED glass has lanthanum dioxide, niobium. There's about a dozen different compounds that could be used for ED glass, okay? So we have a certain dimensionality that's more intense there. Now let's work our way up to blue and then to ultraviolet. Okay, now we got uh, blue LED spectrum. You'll see more dimensionality there. There's more intensity. But one thing you'll notice that unlike the red, you see how it's not that bright. This is pointed away. Everything's the same except for the uh, the wavelength of the LED light transmission. You notice that we have like a uh, lighthouse effect here. We don't have that with red. Let's turn on the red and take a look at it. You see that? No lighthouse effect. See the lighthouse effect here with the blue light? Oh my god! Yeah, that's EM phase retardation. The diffraction grading has uh, X number of lines uh, per millimeter. Just like lenses have X number of lines of uh, MTF charts, X number of lines of resolving power. Okay, now let's take a look at the blue light. Okay. Let's get into focus here. Whoa, a lot more dimensionality. It's harder to see the spectrum on this. You can actually see it good through the diffraction grading if you're wearing them, or you're actually looking through it with really high-end diffraction grading. Okay. Now, what happens? White light is basically RGB. What do you think would happen if I combine RGB together here? Well, let's first let's do the uh, infrared, I mean, excuse me, the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. We have a really awesome lighthouse effect here. More powerful than the blue. Yeah. This is actually an, uh, a, uh, a right near uh, UV uh, LED. Okay, it's still in the, the uh, violet end of the spectrum of a visible, but the actual luminal intensity isn't that great, but that's because most of it's not visible, unless you're using diffraction grading. Whoa, you see the spectrum on that one? Very directional, very high directionality. Okay, okay, you can see the, 
the diffraction grating making up the light. It's very weak towards the red end, very strong towards the green and the blue. Well, duh. That's exactly what it should be. Okay, what happens if we make RGB light? Do you think we might get white light? And we might even get, okay, we've got red and green. Now we see the red blue. Okay, let's stack them all up as they occur in the frequency. Red here, red, green here, and blue here. Okay, so let me cover it up with my finger. Blue, green, red. Combine all three of them. Oh my god, we have this incredible depth. I wonder where chromatic aberration comes from. Oh gee. Oh gee, let's get them into focus there, baby. Oh my god, we have incredible depth. I'm going to make another video here right after this one, and then we'll go into that. We'll talk about a secret of lenses that nobody ever talks about. Nobody's ever talked about because nobody knows crap about light that's involved in photography. They really don't. They don't. Light is a coaxial circuit. ED doped glass is designed to eliminate out a lot of that chromatic aberration by converging the red near end with the far blue end. Higher capacitance light, which has smaller voluminous transverse induction, by using a uh, much higher dielectric permittivity in the ED doped glass which puts the brakes on the blue light and causes less ultimate chromatic aberration out of the lenses. You see the dimensionality that we get here? Oh my goodness, yes! Let's take a look. You can't actually see it that well, but I was trying to show you the actual light pouring through the window. That's actually sunlight, of course. But let's go on to the next video and learn what's what. So. See this? No lighthouse effect on the red light. Much better depth here on the blue end. This is more powerful spectra. There's more capacitance per frequency on blue end spectrum. You see the lighthouse effect? Now all of these LEDs are exactly 100% identical except for the wavelength of the LED that's inside. 100% identical each and every one. You see that? And you see the difference between here? Yeah, a huge difference, that, compared to that. Oh my god, what a difference, right? Oh, yeah, you're a photographer, but you know so much about light. Not. Here's an, well, what's this got to do with photography? Well, how about you learn something about light, and that way you'll understand lenses better, you'll understand the light better. It's called photography. First part of that is photo, meaning light. What is light? Oh, I don't know. It's the stuff I'm trying to capture. Let's see if we can stack them all together in one giant lump. Like I've got them taped together. Oh, my goodness. There we have. See that depth? Oh, my goodness. There's white light right there. Yeah, it's because the RGB are together. Now, as we go further out you'll actually know that we have an issue. Oh my god, you mean that's where we have issues uh, with the corner sharpness? Yes, little Timmy. That's why certain lenses, uh, you know, they all really kind of perform awesome at like f4 and above, but uh, where a lens really lifts its skirt and shows you whether it has uh, STDs on its crotch is when it's wide open like this, not when it's, you know, you catch my drift, you get the point. Great. Little demonstration there. Hope you learned something about light. I'll have a couple of those questions unanswered. Let's see if you can answer them. Bye.